Hello, welcome to Floyd Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Great Wall Hobbies. Next in their instalment are the 144 scale sort of V bombers. Uh, this actually is the Victor B2. We looked at the Vulcan before, absolutely love this kit, great scale for it. So now we've actually got this little gem as well come along as well. One of my favorite aircraft of all time. This aircraft is light years ahead of its time. Um, it looks so futuristic even now, yet it's been out of service now for the best part of 20 years. Okay, so there we go. That is beautiful box art on the front. As you can see, uh, the RAF Strategic Bomber. It's the B2 version. There's a little other clues of things coming out of the way. You can actually get the refueler set now. Don't think the TSR2 is quite out yet. <clears throat> but anyway, there we go. There's your kit number L1004. A bit about it. Obviously, Great Wall Hobbies and Lion Raw with this one. Okay, so having a look in the box. As you can see, you don't get much, as we said. It is obviously one of the smaller scales, but it's a great thing about the V-Bombers. Um, obviously, when you go into the 170 seconds, they become huge big lumps and it's one of those things of like where do you put them you know so having a quick look at the old instructions so starting on the instructions as you can see there isn't going to be too much to this you sort of flip through it quite quickly so as you can see very limited cockpit and wheel wells things like that you've got the speed brake at the back they have a huge speed brake system on the back of these things okay a very important v-tail that's beautiful design uh glass going in at the front as you can see and then a few refueling probes and aerials the wing set i said a little bit complicated the way these go together all the v foot bombers have the same type of engines uh sure this is why we call them the v-force okay uh so they're all going down in there fuel tanks on the wings and then obviously the same to the other side then you can actually have the uh speed brakes open or closed okay on these ones okay wings go on underside uh there's no bombay to this one so it's going to be closed only i'm surprised the aftermarket guys haven't jumped on and put a bombay in for them okay and then obviously the gear going on again like the vulcan this spent the latter part of its life as a tanker so i'm expecting the tanker version to come along as well one of the beautiful things about these aircraft was the markings that are in the very classic cold war um camo on top with the uh, light sky gray underneath okay just down like that and there's your underside slightly wrapped around the front which is a common mistake a lot of people make on this one a couple of different versions you've got down there so you've got you've got 100 squadron 1963 64 for 139 squadron and 1962 uh, in 139 as well so a couple of different marking options for yourself the decals as you can imagine there isn't much to them they tend to be pretty good though uh, when we've looked at them before so a quick look okay as you can see, nothing you'd totally write home about because say they're very, very small, but they're all nicely in register. They've got a sort of satin finish to them as well, so they're not like highly glossed like some of the manufacturers will do or totally flat, all right? So you have got that nice balance. So the kit itself, as I said, there isn't much to it. Uh, if we start on the important bits first, so nice things about these, all completely separate bags. Don't forget, these are all brand new tools. Uh, and everything else so you expect the quality to be pretty good on these i can probably bring this top camera down just a little bit just to get us all in okay so as you can probably see it's all recessed panel line detail on all of these very nicely done there's a beautiful tail you can just see the panel lining coming through there there's the underside of it cockpit is a one piece molded cockpit as you can see uh hopefully you can see on that it's got beautiful details okay with the seats and everything else with something so small all of these are your scoops lumps and bumps that go onto the outside but you say it gives you a sense of the scale and i know it doesn't seem much but um, I think it's a nice scale for these things. You know, it's just definitely still going to be sort of this big when it's completed. All right. But generally, as you can see, there's no real detail on the inside. All the ejector pins are nice and flush. No problem. They're not sticking up or interfering with anything or anywhere that's in the problem. No signs of flash, as you can imagine these days, or anything else on this. Very nicely done. Indeed, even the inside of the... the um, wheel well this is the nose one unfortunately it has got ejector pin marks in there but it's got detail which is the weird thing about it there's no way you're going to get those ejector pin marks out um so it would be a case i would have thought of leaving those alone uh, the only trouble you have got is you have got a bit of burring between the actual parts this guy down here how well you can see it but it's actually got some uh, quite a nasty burring on there you're gonna to have to clean up your fan blades okay so we got the top part of the wings in these <clears throat> so as you can see 
Lovely to see we've got the vortex generators on the top of that wing there, you catch it in the light, you can see all that beautiful engraved details. It's a nice size because the thing is, because of the scale of it, yes, that's massively over proportion. You know, it'd be as wide as your hand, I should think, some of this uh, panel line detailing. But because you get that sort of minimums before you're not gonna take a wash, uh, it's gonna be too fine, it's not gonna be crisp. So this is still very, very nice, it'll work really well. Those those uh, fuel tanks on the underwing, okay, and everything else, but beautifully done, no sign of any problems. You've got a slight wrap around to the top and the last hole ones, and there's a little bit of ejector pin marks on these side, but I don't think there'll be a problem. Again, nice detail in these wheel wells, you can probably see. Got ribbing detail all in those, so that's not too bad at all. The underside of the wings. <coughs> so, on the underside of the wings, again, Beautifully done, all the recessed details. Obviously, we've got no riveting, but that really would be small scale. Um, the air intakes, unfortunately, you have got ejector pin marks in there. I don't think you're ever going to see them. I'm not going to worry about them. It's just they're really in awkward places, like in between the, the blades, uh, the actual vertical blades uh, for the intake, which is a bit of a shame. You might try and get in there with a skinny stick to get rid of those. And again, you might just want to take the height out of some of these ejector pins, and you've got the holes there for opening it up for the uh, latter version for the refueler. So we know that's definitely coming along because it's got the actual pylons for the pods on the wings, which will be a separate part. Right, okay, last bit. These are lovely done, these are way to put onto a nice bit of cardboard. Keeps it all flat. Okay. And they're all taped in place, which is very nicely done. So we might be able to do this on the cardboard, actually. All right. As you can see, no real problems. I think we will whip them off of here. Just to hoof them off, just to make it a bit easier to see those you don't have to worry about. But as you can see, there's those uh, bottoms of the doors. Uh, no problem at all. No ejector pin marks in any of them. Yes, there is, unfortunately. Even on something so small, you wouldn't think it would need it. We've got ejector pin marks there for the nose wheel. The main doors themselves look to be okay. Got a little bit of a sink mark in them, but at this scale, I don't think you're going to notice. The little nozzles are for the engines. Got a little bit of detail just in at the end. I don't know how well the camera can see that. I can see just a, a little bit down in there. Generally okay. And then the wheels, which I hate this thing of the hubs. Absolutely horrible. Okay, so you've got separate, the way this is gonna to go together, I assume they're actually just gonna pop on the, the outside. The only thing is, it's not, but just cleaning these up is gonna be a little bit of a problem. Probably the wheels are so small, because they're very large gates holding them on, and obviously there's no weight on wheels, but at this scale, that's not too much of a problem. You can just put that in. That's if you've got the speed brake open, obviously down there, there's the other part to it. Okay, and stuff like that. Again, a little bit of burring on some of the, the items but um, nothing that's really a problem in this scale. As I say, you haven't got many parts, so it's gonna be quite a double for this to go together. We're not worried about the underside because you're not gonna see anything. Okay, that's the uh, the actual underplate for the belly, uh, for the Bombay, and you've got your glass, which is all raised, so it's gonna make marking, masking very easy on all of that. It's gonna be no problem at all. The only thing is missing, which I haven't seen, is the stand. I'm sure the other one came with a stand. Do they not come with stands these days? I'm absolutely sure the Vulcan, had a stand in it. This particular kit, unless I've got a duff one that doesn't come with a stand, I'm pretty sure, yes, this one came with a stand, which was a lovely little detail. And unless mine is being missed out, this little guy these days doesn't come with a stand. Let's just check in here. Okay, no, no stand, which is a real shame. Oh dear, what a shame, they've really dropped the ball on that. The whole point of these are absolutely beautiful because they came with a little stand, so it almost made them slightly die cast. You can see on the Vulcan uh, how you get the little stand with it, which is a nice touch, but this one, no stand anymore. They're obviously cut the corners, which is a real, real shame. I must admit, that's actually quite annoying. Um, all right, it's only a couple of minutes to stick it on a pole, on a brass pole and a plinth, but just having it on a little stand like that just gave it another little dimension uh, and everything else. So a bit of a drop the ball on that one, I'm afraid. Um, but apart from that, the actual kit itself isn't too bad. It's a very nice kit, nicely detailed. Just shame you get no stand.